you still Mrs. Dayton's foreman, or are you just her night watchman? Uh, a little trouble with my eyes, Cartwright. Just giving them a rest. I'd say you're having a lot of trouble with them. I just rode up your east fence line. It's still shot through with dry rot. Lane, I told you about it three weeks ago. Why haven't you done something about it? Uh, just because you're courting the wind every week don't give you no right to give orders around here. It's going to be a lot easier fixing your fence than chasing stock all over the Nevada Territory. Now, why don't you worry about the widow and let me worry about the stock? I don't know what's eating you, but it's obvious you're not getting the work done around here, so why don't you just pick up your wages and move on, huh? Uh, Cartwright, why don't you go on up to the house and hold your little woman's knitting yarn for her? <laughs> or whatever it is you two do together. <laughs> This is terrible. When he wakes up, he's going to wonder who hit him with an axe handle. He's not getting the work done around, and he doesn't know how to keep a civil tongue in his head. I told him to pick up his wages and leave. Is that right, Mrs. Dayton? Mr. Cartwright running the ranch now? Get your things together. I'll have your money. Well, Adam, are you? Am I what? Are you running this ranch? Take it? Uh, 
I'm sorry, Laura. You should have been fired weeks ago. It happens that I don't like to fire people. Laura, I've been looking over the place. A third of your fence is down. Barn roof is in need of repair before the rains come. Stock looks as though Doc Stone hasn't taken a look at it all summer. The neglect around here is shameful. Well, you must know it takes money to replace fences and re-roof barns. I have a, a ranch payment to meet in two weeks. Let me help. If you don't get this place straightened out, Laura, you're not going to be in any shape to face the fall roundup or, or the winter. I don't want charity. Now look, Laura, it isn't charity. It's just a loan, a business matter entirely. I conduct my business matters with Mr. Weems at the bank. Laura, when was the last time you inspected this place? You know, a ranch doesn't run itself. You gotta watch it, look after it all the time. Well, you seem to forget that I have a house to look after and a child to take care of. How much do you think a woman can do by herself? I know. I'll get you another foreman. Adam, you just don't understand, do you? Sally's mother says she wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he doesn't marry you. Well, Sally's mother is obviously being a bit premature. Adam's interest in me seems to be largely business. But if we need the fence fixed and the roof fixed and you like him and he likes you, why won't you let him help? Dear Peggy... <laughs> Well, sometimes people just get a little bit mixed up. <laughs> the old banker Weems had a good breakfast this morning and no arguments with his wife. <laughs> Them bankers can stare down a rattlesnake if they ask for a loan. Well, I'm going to do my best to charm him. And if he agrees to extend my credit, you boys can start cutting the new fence post right away. I'll watch out for Peggy the rest of the day. Maybe take her horse back in if she wants. Pardon me. I'm looking for Mrs. Frank Dayton. I'm Mrs. Dayton. Uh, this is Dave Wilkins, one of my hands. Howdy. Howdy. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm Ward Bannister, Mrs. Dayton. I was a friend of your late husband. Oh? What is it you want? Well, some months ago, Frank gave me an envelope for safekeeping. I, uh, didn't hear about his death till about a week ago. Or I'd have sent it much sooner. I see. It's a $10,000 insurance policy on Frank's life. Well, I can hardly believe it. I had no idea. Well, it, it, it was very thoughtful of you to ride out all this way to bring it to me. Well, as it happens, I didn't come out here just for this. I'm riding on into Carson City. You don't happen to be riding into town, do you, ma'am? Yes, I am. And this will make the ride much more enjoyable. Well, I'd like to ride along with you, if you don't mind. Well, uh, the insurance agent in San Francisco told me that he needs an affidavit and uh, several questions have got to be answered. And... Well, I can explain these questions to your lawyer, if you like. And... I would appreciate that very much. It'd be my pleasure. You've 
been so helpful. I hardly know where to begin to thank you. I don't mention it. It's my pleasure. Uh, what are your plans in Carson City? Oh, nothing special. I just thought I'd try to catch on to some ranch in the area. You hardly have the look of a ranch hand. Oh, now, these hands have done an awful lot more than deal three-card Monty, Mrs. Day. Well, about the only thing ranching does for hands is grow a crop of calluses. Well, these didn't grow anything else until I was more than 20. Well, would you like to come to work for me? I'd sure like the chance. All right. Let's try it. Um, but I don't think it would be very practical to wrestle down a calf in those clothes. <laughs> You know, I agree with you. I still have some supplies to order. While I do that, you can order some work clothes. Fine. I'll walk you over to the store. I have to send a wire to a friend of mine in Carson City. He's telling me to stay on. Send us off right away, please. Keep the change. Be there in an hour, mister. Shake hands? You sound like Jenks pony can shake hands. You ought to be able to, you dumb old thing. Now shake hands! No, you can't have any sugar until you mind. Please shake hands. Now shake hands. Hi, Mother. Hello, Peggy. You been a good little girl? Yes, Mother. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, Peggy, this is Mr. Bannister. How okay. do you do, Peggy? Hi. Oh, the, the bunkhouse is uh, over next to the barn. Fine. Well, thanks again, Mrs. Dayton. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. well, who's Mr. Bannister, Mother? Well, he was a friend of your father's. He's going to work for us now as a ranch hand. Maybe he can help me with Traveler. Sound like Jank's pony could shake hands, but dumb old Traveler won't learn now. Oh. Well, maybe if you're patient with him, he'll learn too. Well, he's sure being dumb about it. But anyway, he's faster than Sally's pony. <laughs> Traveler don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You get yourself a short little stick and you put it in your left hand. Then you hold out your right hand and you say, shake hands, traveler. And then you take that stick and you give him a smart rap right behind the right hoof. And you'd be surprised how fast dumb old traveler is going to turn into young, smart traveler. Really? Try it. Thanks, Adam. Hi, Peg. Come in. Hey. Oh, 
Hello, Adam. How nice of you to call. Who's the new man I saw at the bunkhouse? His name is Ward Bannister. He was a friend of Frank's in San Francisco. Oh, a friend of Frank's, huh? Yes. Frank did have some friends. Here. What's he doing here? Oh, we, he came to give me a $10,000 life insurance policy that Frank had left with him. You'd probably be interested to know that I've already ordered the new fencing and the new roofing. And I've hired a new foreman. What kind of experience has this Mr. Bannister had? Well, he has done a lot of work with cattle. Does that qualify him as a foreman? Dave Wilkins is the new foreman. Mr. Bannister is the new hired hand. Now, if either Dave or I are dissatisfied with his work, at the end of the first week, he rides out again. Any more questions? No. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some mending to do. Oh, or maybe you'd rather stay and watch. I may have been doing that wrong all this time, too. The reason I came over was, uh, well, if you could possibly be ready, I would take you and Peggy to church and on a picnic tomorrow. Of course we can be ready. If you think you can refrain from criticizing the sermon. I'll do my very best. Good. Sounds like a she-wolf. Many wolves around here? Oh, there's one denned up there in the hills with some pups. Who's this Adam fella? One of the Cartwrights. Mrs. is kind of sweet on him. Kid's crazy about him. Well, except for being made foreman, old lady Luck is sure going to sour on me today. And you better deal me in. She's been sweet as honey to me. One of you fellas lend me some rifle ammunition? Well, there's a whole box of it inside. Uh, help yourself. Why? Well, I thought I'd take a crack at that wolf in the morning. Hey, uh, that should be a good way to get rid of the Sunday morning do-nothings. Would you mind if we went with you? Oh, sure. I... Sermon. Well, just because I spent half the time looking at you doesn't mean I don't know what the sermon was all about. <laughs> uh, the picnic hamper is in the spring house. It won't take Peggy and me more than a few minutes to get changed. And what are you all grinning about? For you. For me? Oh, thank you, Mr. Bannister. What are you going to call him, Peggy? I'll call him Prince. <laughs> I've always wanted a puppy called Prince. Adam, uh, this is Ward Bannister, Adam Cartwright. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Cartwright? Laura, <laughs> you know that's a wolf cub. <laughs> Boy, dear, he kept complaining all last night how the mother kept him awake. So this morning we went out to get her. Wasn't well, easy getting that little critter out either. They're in a van as frisky as a kitten. Well, that was a fool thing to do. Oh, well, why was it a fool thing to do, Adam? Well, Laura, the puppet's fun now, but when it grows up, it'll be what it is, a wolf. 
If you're going to be gone for a few hours, I suggest that you take the cub back and put him back where you found him. Any way you want it, Miss Cartwright. I don't want him taken back. I want him to stay here. Please, Adam. He's so little and helpless. Peggy. He's got to go back sooner or later. It'd be better if you do it now before you really get to like him. But I like him now, and I'm going to keep him. Peggy. I'll go talk to Peggy, ma'am. I don't want to cause any trouble. Come. Laura, you're not going to let her keep the pup. It'll grow up to be a dangerous animal. I know, Adam. I know. I don't know how to run a ranch. I don't know who to fire. I don't know who to hire. The fences are falling down and the roof's leaking and, and the stock is unattended. And now I can't even make the right decision about whether my child should have a pet or not. Well, Adam, if I'm so hopeless, why do you bother? Why do you even bother? It's a very fair return, isn't it? You'll find that though money is a hard master, it's a willing servant. You must make your capital work for you, that's... Well, thank you very much for your advice, Mr. Weems. Oh, uh, this is Ward Bannister, my new hand. How do you Mr. do, Mr. Weems. Bannister? Everything all right, Mrs. Dayton? Yes, including a nice little lecture on the value of money. Now, I still have some things to do. Have you finished your errands? Yes, ma'am. Oh, would you mind driving me? But I may as well do these things while we can. Not at all. Where do first? Bannister? Yes. <laughs> Bless my soul, it is. How are you, Ward? Fine, fine. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Dayton. She's my employer. How do you do? Well, a pleasure, Mrs. Dayton. Ward, what are you up to now? I'm a ranch hand. And a very good one. <laughs> Ward was a very good timber cruiser for me some years ago, Mrs. Dayton. The problem was to keep him tied down in one place. <laughs> well, I must hurry along. Nice to see you, Ward. And a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Dayton. As a matter of fact, why can't we have lunch at the hotel? I hate dining alone. Can't feel I'm not particularly dressed for a restaurant. Well, possibly you can convince him. I'll be pushing along to San Francisco in a day or two, and it may be another five years before we meet. You don't have to worry, Ward. The people in the Virginia City Hotel are quite used to men in trail clothes. All right, fine, Miss Kent. Half an hour, then? Fine. He seems like a pleasant man. I suppose the least I could do is get a shave. I'll meet you back here in a half hour, then. I'll meet you at the hotel. At the hotel. Good. I was hoping you'd think to stop by. Where's the girl? Shopping. I'm getting a shave. She wasn't uh, suspicious when you told her that you were a friend of her husband's. From what I gathered from the ranch hands, uh, he didn't talk too much about his trips to San Francisco. <laughs> I can understand why. Oh, there was a lot more pleasure than business. <laughs> Who was she talking to at the bank? The president. Seemed to me to be a careful old codger. Uh, that's probably who she'll be checking with. I'm rather glad I was careful to pick something he'd approve. And what would that be? <laughs> the San Francisco Monterey Railroad. San Francisco Monterey? I never heard of it. <laughs> Neither had anyone else until two months ago. It's Jay Banyan's promotion. For old time's sake and a cut of the proceeds, he let me in on it. <laughs> Think old Weems will go for this? Oh, I'm sure of it. Jay's been clever about this one. Right-of-way surveys, negotiations for land. <laughs> Banker Weems has probably read all about it in the financial news. But we've got to be quick. What's the next step? Just follow my lead. Here's to our pigeon, who's about ready to be plucked.
Say one thing, Laura. What? I'm sorry. I hadn't realized what a pleasure it was calling on you, knowing that I was welcome. Well, the running D's always welcome calls from neighbors. That's not exactly what I meant. Would you have lunch with me today? I've been an idiot and I realize it. I hadn't guessed the Cartwright men would confess to a thing like that. Well, it takes time, but it sinks in. I already have a luncheon engagement today, Adam. I'm sorry. I really am. But I don't have any plans for the evening. Good. I'll see you tonight. Those were the good old days. All right. <laughs> we were a little younger in those days, I guess. At least I was. You haven't aged. Uh, do you mind, Mrs. Dayton? No, not at all. Ward, may no, I no. have a cigar? No, thanks. <laughs> Ward, now you occasionally showed a knack for making money in the past. Did you ever hang on to any of it? Just long enough to get me to the card table, Mr. Canfield. Too bad. I agree. Well, why do you ask? Well, I'm involved in a most unusual enterprise in San Francisco. The San Francisco Monterey Railroad. The shares are $100 apiece, which is a sum, of course, but the value should well double itself within a very few months. Well, if Mrs. Dayton will advance me three months' salary, uh, I might just be able to handle one share. <laughs> <laughs> Don't treat it lightly, my friend. This is a most unusual opportunity. Did you say the stock would double its value in a few months? Well, I should say there's very little chance of it doing otherwise with the important people behind it. Why do you ask? Mr. Canfield, I uh, might be interested in an investment. Well, oh, good. <laughs> A couple of shares will give you the satisfaction of having been part of an important contribution to the West. Now then, Ward... Uh, no, I would be interested in uh, more than a couple of shares. Uh, could I get as many? Eighty? <laughs> but that would be uh, eight thousand dollars, my dear young lady. Yes, I know. I assume you have a financial advisor. A financial advisor? Well, I suppose Mr. Weems at the bank could help me. <laughs> well, then, why don't you just glance through this, Mrs. Dayton? And then, if you're still interested, we'll call on Mr. Weems. All right. <laughs> Peggy, maybe we should let Prince go. Well, he doesn't seem to be very happy. But he shouldn't have been spanked for killing those chickens, Mother. Mm. He'll get over it. I suppose he shouldn't have been. After all, it's the nature of a wolf to kill chickens, isn't it? But he will get over it. I know he will. Well, let's hope so. Now, you go get ready for bed. I'll be in a few minutes. Yes, Mother. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. I had just this moment decided to go and see if you're in the bunkhouse. Oh, have you got a chore you'd like me to tend to, maybe? Oh, no. Uh, your friend, Mr. Canfield, uh, have his ventures always been successful? His ventures have been very successful. 
Mr. Canfield's a very clever man. He seems to be. Can't make up your mind whether or not to invest, right? Well, $8,000 is a considerable sum of money. Wish I had it. Mr. Canfield's given me several opportunities, but I uh, just never can handle them. It sounds like wonderful investment. You don't have too much time to make up your mind, do you? Remember, uh, Mr. Canfield's got to leave sometime tomorrow. Well, good night, ma'am. Oh, Ward, uh, I called Dave Wilkins in to, uh, to compliment him on the wonderful job he's been doing, and, well, he said it was your doing. Well, that was mighty nice of him. You do like the life here, don't you? Well, yes, I like it here very much. Oh, well, Dave told me another thing. He doesn't really like the responsibility of being the foreman. Uh, he would stay on those a hand. Well, now, if you would be interested in taking over his job... Well, I don't think I could do that, no. Oh, yes, you could. You're, you're just being modest. I have been told by experts that I need a man to run this ranch. Well, maybe that could be you. We might work out some sort of a share arrangement. Now, you, you think about it, Ward. Ma'am. Yes? You really want me to stay on here, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know how to say this. I'm... Well, I'm not too much at giving people advice. Well, that's a refreshing change. I've been thinking it's a, it's a good thing to invest in your own property. And that way you can see it working for you. You mean the $8,000 I might invest with Mr. Canfield? Well, uh, Dave and the boys and I were talking in the bunkhouse, and we figured that, well, the running D can handle three times the herd you have. You got a thousand acres of timber up north that hasn't even seen an ax. Now, if you invest your money in cattle and equipment for lumbering, you... That sounds wonderful. But if I invest the money with Mr. Canfield, I can double it in hardly any time at all. Then think of all the things we can do for the ranch. Now, that's another thing I want to talk to you about. Oh, it's so nice to have someone around who treats me in a, as an adult and, instead of picking on me all the time. I'm so glad you came along, Ward. Come on. Who is it? Just somebody who carried your packages this afternoon. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, that's all right. I, I was reading. I hadn't even noticed the time. Uh, there's some coffee in the back of the stove. You want some? Mm hmm It will, uh, I think, help keep me alert and uh, minding my manners. I found a nice spot for the picnic, Sunday. Mountain glade, waterfall. I think only the Indians know where it is. That sounds like fun. Think Peggy'd like to come along? I hope so. Oh, you were right about that wolf cub, Adam. It is becoming a problem. It would be nice to keep her mind off it. Now, let's see now. How does my tab stand with this cribbage tournament? I believe you owe me $745,000. Yeah, you know, and I have a feeling that I'm going to even it up tonight in one fell swoop. I'm sorry, Adam. You probably could, but I'm afraid I couldn't keep my mind on the game. You know that luncheon I had today? Well, I met a man named James Canfield. Uh, he's offered me a very attractive investment opportunity. Oh, what kind? The San Francisco Monterey Railroad. Canfield, local man? Oh, no, he's a friend of Ward Bannister's. He just happened to be in town from San Francisco. How much are you intending to invest? Eight thousand dollars. 
Oh, he's promised to double it in a few months. It's hard to resist, isn't it? What do you know about Mr. Canfield? I told you he's a friend of Ward Bannister's. Look, Laura, Bannister is a stranger that rode into this town just a couple of months ago. He is a very hard-working man and a nice one. Maybe he is, but that isn't enough reason to put a lot of money into an investment on the word of a friend of his that just happened to be passing through town. I've discussed this thoroughly with Mr. Weems. He is very impressed. Well, Mr. Weems is a very capable small-town banker. But I doubt very seriously if he knows too much about high finance, or Bannister's uh, Mr. Canfield, for that matter. Mr. Weems has sent a telegram to the president of the railroad, asking him if Mr. Canfield represented him. He won't let me make a move until he gets a confirming wire. Mm. And Mr. Canfield has to leave town soon, hmm? Yes. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Why? <laughs> Let's play some cribbage, huh? myself in a messy situation with Laura. She's investing in this railroad. Big one. I don't know, the mood she's in, I don't seem to be able to get very far in discussing it with her. Do well, you think it's a bad investment? Depends on who the other investors are, how much stock has been sold, if they have any freight orders. She hasn't even bothered to check into these things. Can't you? Well, I intend to. I uh, thought I'd wire our broker in Frisco tomorrow morning and uh, let him check these things out. But the <laughs> trouble is, if we think it's a poor investment and I persuade her to pull out of it and it turns out to be a good investment, well, I'm going to be as welcome at the running D as an outbreak of cholera. Is it important to you to be welcome at the running D? Well, it is uh, now more than it was a few weeks ago, yeah. Al, well, you getting the answer to that telegram we sent off this morning? No answer yet, Adam. I'll be over at the hotel having lunch. When it comes in, get it over to me right away, will you? I uh, sure will. You know, it's a funny thing. Mr. Weems, the banker, got a telegram from San Francisco today about that fellow Canfield. Said he was in power to act for the railway. For a stranger, he sure is popular. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah, he won't be here for long, though. Mr. Weems tells me he's taking the stage back to San Francisco today. Thanks, Al. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. You're not supposed to be seen with me again until after I've gotten the money. That's what I want to talk to you about. Mrs. Dayton came into town this morning. Did she give you a check to invest? Oh, she certainly did. We plucked our little pigeon for $8,000. Jim, will you do me a favor and forget all about it? I don't want to take her for any money. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> if every pigeon were as easy as this one has been, I'd be a millionaire today. I'll be at that bank in Carson City when the doors open tomorrow morning and you can have your $4,000. Don't cash that check, Jim. <laughs> You're gone on the girl. Don't cash the check. Aren't you forgetting that this is my little deal, Ward? When I picked you up, you couldn't buy your way into a penny ante game. Jim, will you give me the check? I'll hold on to it for a while, and then I'll say you sent it to me because you found out the railroad is in trouble or something. Anything. But you'll get your share, I promise you. How? You've never seen a thousand dollars in one lump in your life, let alone this much. 
Now, run along, will you? I want to get some rest. Adam, just a minute to come in. Thanks. In San Francisco, Monterey Railroad, and list on exchange. Investigation shows can't be lately scombed in his car. Confidence man. <laughs> Present whereabouts unknown regards to fact. Any answer, Adam? What well, time the next stage for San Francisco leaves? Well, not for about half an hour. Those Canfields already checked out? Well, there's only one way to find out. better now that you've let Prince go, don't you? I guess so, Mother. Can I see Traveler for a while? Oh, just for a little while. Then when you come in, I'll read you a story. When Dave told me that you'd been gone most of the day, I, I thought maybe you'd changed your mind about staying on here. I did change my mind, but not about that. What do you mean? Well, this is the check I gave Mr. Canfield this morning. I saw Canfield after you agreed to make the deal with him. And, well, we had a long talk, and uh, well, he finally admitted that there was too much risk in that sort of investment. More risk than I want you to take. There's something more I want to talk to you about, Laura. What is it, Ward? I found something here I've been looking for for years. Something I never thought would be possible for me again. Well, I think that's wonderful. I'm very happy for you. Marry me, Laura. Please marry me. Marry you? In no time at all, we can have the running D in real fine shape. What? I, I don't understand you. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. Don't you remember what you said last night? I wasn't talking about getting married. What was it? You said that this, this ranch needed a man and that, that I could be him. What did you mean by that? That I admired you, that, that you might run the ranch from me. Run the ranch? But that's all. That's all that I meant. That's all! Mm -hmm. 
The times we spent together, all those weeks, the talks we had about the ranch, what we were going to do with it, was all just meant for nothing. No, no, we were going to do it on shares for you. Shares? Shares? No, oh, no, it was more than that, Lori. It was more than that. <laughs> I had to get carried away like a like a punk kid in his first poker game. <laughs> Warden can't feel the partners in a scheme to rob you of the money with that phony railroad stock. I even risked my neck to get you that money back. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's what comes of dreaming. Let's go, Ward. Ward, I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Sorry about that little wolf pup. We let him go this afternoon. That's where we've been. I guess you can never change animals from what they're meant to be. That sometimes happens with people too, Peggy. Be a good girl now, huh? Thank you. 